Welcome to this video on Windows Server 2012 looking at how we can clone domain controllers using some of the new features introduced in Hyper-V and will be available in other hypervisors in the near future. The first thing we need to have a look at is you cannot actually clone a DC if the DC is the primary domain controller. So here using some PowerShell we're just actually going to try and find the domain controller that is the primary domain controller emulator um, and just confirm it's not the machine that we're on. So we're just using the get AD computer and then effectively just using a, a filter to limit the uh, results back to the primary DC. So as we can see here the computer has been returned as QADC02 happens to be the primary DC because that's what we put on the filter. So the machine that I'm going to clone is not called QADCO2, so we will actually be able to use this machine quite successfully. So it's QADCO1 that we're going to use for the cloning. You'll see that we have a new group called Clonable Domain Controllers. The domain controller you're going to clone needs to be a member of that group. So we'll just add the computer into the group, QADCO1. There we go. So we'll close Active Directory users and computers down. And just going back to our Hyper-V manager, you can actually see that our QADCO one's there, and we're just going to connect across to the console of that machine so we can start the cloning process. We're just logging into QADCO one so using uh, domain administrative credentials. And we're going to open up a PowerShell prompt. <clears throat> With the prompt now open, we will use the get addc cloning excluded application list PowerShell command. And this will allow us to retrieve the list of applications that have been installed, services that are on the system, which the cloning process believes it cannot clone. So you can see there it's returned DHCP server. Now if I was to try and clone this machine as it is with that application installed the actual cloning process would fail. Now the idea with this list is you can then consult with the application vendors and actually find out whether those applications are safe to be cloned. And obviously this would revolve around um, unique identifiers, uh, GUID information that they might maintain which needs to be on a per instance basis. If you deem that your applications are safe to be cloned you can effectively add the applications to a safe clone list and we'll do that in a moment. If the applications are deemed not to be safe to be cloned then in that instance that you would have to remove the applications before you can proceed any further. So we're going to run the same command again, but this time we're going to go and generate or, or run the command with a, a, a generate XML command, which will then actually go and create this file called custom DC clone allow list .xml, which again is stored in the same directory as the NTDS database. So this now has basically added DHCP server to that list and will allow DH, the DHCP server service to be cloned as well. So you can now see I'm running the new addc clone config file. And this is going to basically prepare an XML file which will have all of the uh, input parameters required for the new DC. So this file could contain static IP address, DNS server name, etc. etc. I'm just going to use it in such a way that I'm going to use the clone computer name parameter just to specify the name of the new domain controller. So you can see we're validated that we're not running this on the uh, primary domain controller and we're just basically going to create the uh, file that's required. So you can see the cloning process has completed um, and so we're now at the point that we just need to shut this domain controller down and we need to export the domain controller. So we'll close the PowerShell prompt down and we'll shut down QADC01 
it's just take a few seconds. Once the domain controller has been shut down, we'll be able to go to the Hyper-V manager and we'll be able to export the virtual machine. So we can see QADCO1 just in the final stages of closing down and hopefully it'll state will go to off and the system. So now we can go through the export process so I can specify a folder that I would like to export the virtual machine to. So I'm just going to create a new folder quickly. The export process will take a few seconds, so we'll just speed this process up. With the export now complete, we can start the original domain controller back up, and that will start normally, problems at all. What we can also do is we can now import that virtual machine that we've just exported. So we run through the Hyper-V import wizard just to uh, point it at the folder where we exported it to. Obviously if you wanted to go in and rename the files, those sorts of things, you could perform all of those actions if you wanted to. Obviously you see it's going to give a, the machine a, the same name as the one we exported. Okay, so obviously we'll change that in a moment. Um, you see we're going to take a copy of the virtual machine, so we're going to create a new unique ID so the machine's not going to have the same GUID ID as before. And at this point, I can choose to store the virtual machine in different locations. So again, I can actually go in there and create folders based around the virtual machine's uh, new name, QA-DC03. So press next. And obviously just specify the import folder for the virtual disks. I was like, where the virtual disks are going to go. Go. and that will now basically start the import process when I press finish. So again this will take a little while just to go and copy the fairly large virtual disk files that are sitting behind this, these, this domain controller so again I'll speed this process up. So the import process is just completing now so we can see that we have our new domain controller imported. I'm just going to rename the machine in the Hyper-V manager so we don't get confused. So QADC03. Okay, and I'm just going to basically clean that snapshot up, which I don't need. Technically, you shouldn't clone domain controllers with snapshots, but it appears to work okay. So we're just going to start the domain controller up. So right-click start as normal and then we'll connect to the console and we'll see that it initially boots as you would expect a Windows Server 2012 machine to actually start up. So you get the Windows logo, the circle spinning round, but then we should see it actually start to progress through the cloning process. So hopefully the system will detect the presence of the XML files to be used for, for cloning. Um, it will work out that it is the new domain controller and it will start to actually clone the machine. So give the machine its new identity, its new IP configuration if applicable. Um, obviously generate um, new security identifiers for the machine and then actually start to uh, communicate within the Active Directory. So as we can see the cloning service process has just come to an end, the machine is restarting and we're now starting to boot the Windows operating system. So hopefully this should boot the system up normally and we should be presented with the logon screen. Obviously this has been um, speeded up a little bit, this would normally take between um, 3 to 4 minutes to complete. So hopefully, first thing you'll notice, we're part of the domain QA training and we should be able to sign on with domain-based credentials. So hopefully we've signed on successfully. And because this was a copy of the old machine, effectively you can see that I still have that shutdown tracker uh, message basically from a, sort of an unclean shutdown from before. Hopefully server manager will load. 
what we should be able to do is test whether Active Directory communication is working successfully. So first of all, you can see you know, it's picked up all the role information. If I go to the Active Directory Domain Services section, and for the system to come back and give me a list, list of machines, we can see that QA DCO2 is in the list. Obviously, the system is still refreshing, and now we can see QA DCO3 is actually in the list as a domain controller as well. So it's, it's actually recognised that the machine is installed as a domain controller. If I go to QA DC03, and actually go and start Active Directory using computers, you can see that obviously Active Directory computers fires. You can see that the computer name is QA DC03. If I was to go in and, for example, create a new object, so this object will be created on QA DCO3. So we'll just create a demo user account. So clone DC user. So you're supplying password information. So we've got the user account created. If I now go and connect to an alternative domain controller, so I can pick one of the other domain controllers, hopefully we should see replication has occurred and we should see that effectively we have a healthy DC using the cloning process. So we'll just check the last of the three domain controllers that we have and we can see that that user object has been replicated around all of our domain controllers. Hopefully this video has been useful for you and thank you for your time watching this video. Again, my name is Paul Gregory. Please feel free to follow me on Twitter as Paul L. Gregory. Or again, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.